been so good to me. You woke me up this morning, started me on my way, made a way out of no way, turned my midnight into day. I want to thank you for being so good to me. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you for being so good. I just, I want to thank you. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being so good to me. Oh, I just, I want to love you. I just, I just want to love you, Lord. I just, I just want to love you. I just, I just want to love you. I want to love you for being so good to me. Oh, I think you woke me up early this morning. Started me on my way. Let me tell you something. You looked over all my faults and you kept on making a way. I want to thank you for being so good to me. I want to say something else. I got food on my table. I got shoes on my feet. I got clothes on my back. I know, Lord, that you're able. I want to thank you for being so good to me, so good to me. Oh, Lord, we just want to thank you. I just, and we just want to thank you. I just, and we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being, I want to thank you for being, we just want to thank you for being, we just want to thank you for being, we want to thank you for being so good to me. Oh, yeah, I want to thank you. I just want to take the time out and thank you. Made a way out of no way. Turned my midnight into day. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Joy in my soul. Joy in my soul. I want to thank you for being so good to me. Whoa. Whoa. I want to thank you for being so good to me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God, we just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, thank for you, being Lord. so good to us, Lord. Let us pray, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for being so good to us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day of Pentecost, Lord. Lord, help us all to get on one accord, Lord, to come together, Lord, 
and give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you deserve, Lord. Lord, we can, we can just think of so many things, Lord, but today, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For being better to us than we are to ourselves, Lord. To just thank you, Lord, for your, for your mercy, Lord, and your grace, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for just being there, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being a strong tower, Lord, that we can lean on, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the God that you are in being God all by yourself, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for everything, Lord. We are just so grateful, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the friends, Lord, for the family, Lord, for the neighbors, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for having your people in places that we couldn't even go, Lord, to let somebody know, Lord, that you are God and you are God by yourself, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being there, Lord, letting us know, Lord, that you can do all things. All things are possible through Christ Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for just being who you are, Lord. For just being who you are and being who you are alone, Lord. I can just go all day, Lord. Hallelujah. Just thanking you, Lord. Thank you. For everything. For waking us up, Lord. For starting us on our day, Lord. For clothing us in our right mind, Lord. For giving us a roof over our head, Lord. And give us shelter, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We just say thank you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress, glory divine. Here of salvation, purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song in my Savior all day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praise in my Savior. Submission, all is at hand in my Savior. I'm happy and blessed, walking and waiting. Looking above, filled with his goodness, whoa, lost in his love. 
This is my story. This is my song. Praise in my Savior. song great in my Savior all day long this is my story this is my song great in my Savior song praising my Savior all day long one more time this is my story this is my song Sing my song, praise in my Savior all the day long. my song Hallelujah. and we're praising our savior all the day long thank you for that song thank you it touched my soul Hallelujah. thank you hallelujah now today is the day that the lord has truly made yes thank god lord. for pentecost sunday thank you jesus thank god thank god that he came yes lord and he gave his life for us didn't he do it and he's coming back again for us and if we do what we're supposed to do Tell we'll be caught up yeah. Caught up Amen. in the end. Hallelujah. How, how many people believe that? Let's give God a hand praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Now today, I'm going to give you the announcements for the week. God bless you. First, the thought of the week is a lie doesn't become truth. Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted by a majority. That quote was written by the great Booker T. Washington, an American educator. Don't forget that today we will have Kingdom Keepers for Christ at 1 p.m. Our young people have an awesome ministry and you can join them 
on Zoom, continue to encourage their ministry. They, re they reach people not only in our sanctuary and other states, but sometimes in other countries. Amen? We will have Bible study on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. You can meet with us on Zoom and you can call in on the Zoom number. Yeah. Okay. And we will read our weekly scriptures later on at the end of service. The people who are on the prayer line, Monday through Saturday, I will give you the books that we will have for the scriptures. Monday will be Genesis, Tuesday, Acts, Wednesday, Acts, Thursday, Acts, Friday, Romans, and Saturday, Psalms. I will give you all of the other information that goes along with that. And don't forget every, every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Somebody say 6 a.m. 6 a.m. We have prayer. And prayer is awesome. Prayer changes things. Anyone is a witness to prayer changes things, not only in their lives, but the people that they prayed for. Amen. Okay. And we have the prayer on the prayer line. Okay. That number is 667 770 one five five seven and the access code is two three eight two seven zero now we're not going to have this is the first sunday as we all know and usually we have communion but because our pastor in his absence is away with his daughter having a wonderful time because she's going she's a senior in her school amen. and going to be graduating Praise going to high school amen we will have communion next Sunday, which will be the second Sunday. So anyone who wants to pick up communion to, on Saturday, this coming Saturday coming up, you can pick up the communion mm -hmm. from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Our pastor will be here to make sure that you have that. So when we have service on Sunday morning, you can take part in the communion with us. Amen. Now we have something that is awesome to our ministry that helps our ministry keeps on going and everyone can participate in that. You can, it's your offerings. It's your tithes and offerings. And as our pastor says, and he made us remember this and tested us on a Bible study. What does he usually say about tithing? Tiding is the first that God has given you, the first fruit. And he said when he became saved and gave his life over to Christ, he didn't tithe automatically. It was a process. Okay, so continue and to believe God, give your tithes and offerings, and have faith. Because faith is important. And you can give in many ways. You can go on Zelle if you have that. Go to Carter Community AME at gmail.com. Or if you have the Giplify app, mm -hmm. you can go to Carter Community AME Church. Yes. If you have PayPal, you can go to Carter Community AME Church at gmail.com. Or you can do it the good old fashioned way through the mail. And our address here at Carter Community AME Church is 112 25. 167th Street, Jamaica, New York, 11433. And all of us who are in the sanctuary today, we have receptacles in the back where you can put your tithes and offerings. Amen. Let us offer a word of prayer for the offering. Father God, thank you for the things that you have given and allowing us to also give you the first fruits back to you and continue to, to be a blessing to other folks, God. Thank you, God. God bless the ones who had the desire to give but did not, did not have it. But in their heart, they wanted to give. Bless them, God. God, we thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you for this offering so that we can continue to spread your word all through the country, all through the nations, and in Carter community. Amen.
on Christ. Hallelujah. That solid rock I stand over the ground. Kansan Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. You. We will be reading from the book of Acts, chapter one, verses four through five. Yes, Lord. And verse eight. And chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, I will say that again. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, verse 8, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I will be reading from the Holman Standard Christian Bible. While he was together yes. with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, mm -hmm. but to wait for the Father's promise. Yeah. This, he said, is what you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem in all Ju Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Chapter two, verses one through four. When the day of Pentecost have, have, had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a violent rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were staying. And tongues like flames of fire that divided and appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them ability for speech. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words. Amen. Now I have the pleasure, I have the pleasure yeah. of introducing our pastor for today, our preacher for today. Yeah. And she is no stranger to this house. She is the sister of this house. Yes, yes. Reverend Greta Gaynor Anderson. Amen. And what I can say about Reverend Greta Anderson, she is not ashamed of the gospel. She is not ashamed, even if nobody else is shouting, Reverend Greta is gonna give the Lord praise. She is truly a word, a, 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 a child of the most high God. I thank you. I thank you for your spirit, Reverend Anderson. Your spirit is awesome. Yes. We see God in you. Amen. Wherever you go, it doesn't mean if we're in the sanctuary only, but even outside in the That's street, right. you have an right. awesome word for someone. And her famous word when you ask her, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Amen. Amen. Excellent. I'm sorry. I'm doing excellent. You wouldn't know if she wasn't feeling good or whatever. I'm doing excellent. So the next voice that you will hear after the sermonic selection is our own. Yes, you are our own, sis. Yes, she is. Reverend Greta Gaynor Anderson. Thank you.
power, power, wonder working power in the prayer, just blood of the land. Blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the place, the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, let me just say this. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? There is one the working power, power in the blood. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? There is the one, the working in power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, power. Come on, y'all can help me. From the working power in the blood, precious blood. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? There is power in the blood, power in His blood. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? power in the blood. Oh, there is power, 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 power. wonder working, wonder working power in the praise, the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, my God, Holy Ghost power. the land. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank hallelujah. you, God. Hallelujah. 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 There is oh, precious oh, hallelujah power. Glory, glory, There's power glory, in the precious glory. blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why we're here today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Reverend Coleman, for reminding us 
Hallelujah. On Pentecost Sunday, that there is power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, Carter. Good morning, Facebook friends and family. Good morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Father. Hallelujah. It's good to be back here and to see all of you. Hallelujah. And to truly be seen in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We give honor, hallelujah, to God, who's the head of our house, who's the head of our lives who's the head lord god is sovereign over all things we give you honor and praise first and foremost our lord and savior jesus christ worthy yes he is hallelujah never slumbers nor sleeps hallelujah (laughs) so lord god we just thank you for the opportunity to be even here at carter community one more time we give honor to pastor and Dr. Kevin Miller in his absence, and to First Lady Myra Miller, who's here with us, uh, always serving. We wanna thank God for the opportunity to even break the bread of life and to be here one more time. It's good to see all of you. I haven't seen you in quite a while. It's good to be here. I give honor even to my pastor, the Reverend Elaine Flake of the Greater Allen Cathedral, and I thank God for even you inviting me here and she releasing me to come hallelujah, on this Pentecost Sunday. So I thank you for that. And of course, I see so many familiar faces, so I'm gonna give honor even to our trustees and our missionaries and our stewards and, and my, my sister, uh, Denise Moore, boy, she's growing by leaps and bounds, hallelujah. Stepping hallelujah into her gifting, and it's such a pleasure to see in Jesus' name. And I just have to even do a shout out to little Reverend, um, little Reverend, is that um, a prediction or a prophecy? And I'm talking about little Emmanuel. <laughs> Hallelujah, so good to see him growing. Hallelujah, in God and in grace. Uh, let us go before the throne of God. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and it's so good to be here in this celebration of um, the falling of the Holy Spirit and the creation of the church. Oh, good and gracious God, we come before you as humbly as we know how. Just so grateful and thankful, Lord God, to be in relationship with you. Thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ, who went to the cross for all of us, Lord God, that we, hallelujah, might be able to come on this day and receive the precious promise of your Holy Spirit. He said he had to leave us, but would not leave us comfortless, Lord God. So we thank you, God, for the dwelling, indwelling, and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I just pray that you have your way in this space today. Have your way on Facebook, everyone who hears this message. We pray, Lord God, that you would fill them and anoint them with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. The text lesson for this morning has been read by Sister Denise. Um, You can go back in your leisure and take a look at it. It's Acts 1, verses 4 through 5, and verse 8, and Acts 2, 1 through 4. And it tells us of the the story, hallelujah, of when the Holy Ghost fell. But the title for this lesson today is Hold On to Your Faith. Saints of God, hold on to your faith. The media and current news cycle sets our focus on what's sensational and or important to those who control the conversation that we're having right now today in this nation. Last Wednesday, four people were massacred and multiple others were injured in a health facility in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The weapon used there was a rifle. The past two weeks we cried and we prayed and were outraged by a well-planned intentional massacre of 10 African Americans in Top Supermarket in Buffalo, New York. Family members were mowed down like grass with a military weapon that was legally obtained by a racist young white male. Last week in a school in Uvalde, Texas, 21 Latinx, 19 of whom were children, were the victims. It was merely hours before the children, family, teachers, celebrated their educational accomplishments. It was two days before the end of their school year. Then they were mutilated by the young white male with a military weapon. It's been reported that since that shooting, more than 100 new massacres have occurred. 
they were not nationally reported. But gun violence is completely out of control in this nation. Three weeks ago, the Ukrainian war dominated the news uh, cycle day and night. Billions of our tax dollars were sent to fund the war in Ukraine. But Congress couldn't seem to find the votes or um, in the Democratic Party, and, and I'll just point them out, and that's a mansion in West Virginia and a cinema in Arizona. And they could not find any Republicans to pass the Build Back Better Act. If it became law, it would support early childhood education, a climate change package, health care, child care, and include additional support for Americans. There are numerous political and policy issues, personal and family matters, and church and spiritual concerns that threaten our lives and our peace. People are living without hope. They're living in fear and have no clue how or why they are where they are or how to get out or beyond the stagnation. People are stuck. Even people in the church, in the body of Christ, are stuck. The nation is stuck. I know this is a grim picture that I'm drawing, but Ecclesiastes tells us that there's nothing new under the sun, which means we have seen this script roll before. In the book of Acts, we see the fulfillment of God's promise to send help. Jesus tells his disciples and other followers not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Jesus said, John had baptized with water, but in a little while, you will be baptized with Holy Spirit. Jesus is talking to his followers 40 days after his resurrection. After he said this, he ascended into heaven. And 10 days later, the promise of Holy Spirit descended upon those who were in the upper room where about 120 persons, including his disciples, they waited. They were in one place and on one accord. Holy Spirit appeared as tongues of fire and rested upon each of them. And they all spoke in a tongue or language that was not their own. A few lessons I want to um, highlight from this text. The first point, from this text, we learn that the people heard the word from Jesus to stay and to wait in Jerusalem. Those who have ears to hear, the Bible says, hear what thus saith the Spirit to the church. And now it's important, saints of God, that we know the truth, especially when misinformation and disinformation are a central part of the national discourse, TV news and social media outlets, when books that tell the truth are being banned from schools and libraries, we must know our history. We must know American history. We must know Bible history. If you do not know the truth, you will easily be conditioned by the lie. And to be conditioned by a liar leads to self-destruction. But remember, you never rise alone or fall alone. When you rise up, you take your family and community with you. When you self-destruct, you take your family and community with you. The word of God is truth. Read the word, study the word, and get a good understanding of the word. Attend the Bible study. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman or woman who needeth not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of salvation, hallelujah, that worketh within us. Then you'll be able to rightly divide the word of truth. When some question comes up, even in your spirit, you'll know where to go to get an answer. When a question comes up on your job, in the street, in the supermarket, wherever you are, you will have an answer. The Bible says have an answer for all men. So when things come up, if you don't know the answer, then you pray. Holy Spirit is what teaches us, leads us, guides us, counsels us. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. We need a dwelling on the inside of us. And it's an all-day affair, 24-7. God never slumbers nor sleeps. The spirit is his spirit. 
the third person in the Trinity. He never slumbers nor sleeps. We may take a rest. We may take a break. We may um, lay down and, and, and go off for a minute, but the Holy Spirit is still alive and well. And when we need an answer to a question, when we need support, when we need help, when we need power, just to stand, when we need power, when we're tempted and tested, that Holy Spirit's role is to aid us in those situations, is to give us those answers and those deal with those concerns. That's the role of Holy Spirit. There is no church without Holy Spirit. There is no church. There is, hallelujah. There is no you or me without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, what you see is what we've, I just talked about. That grim picture, that is a, a, a young man, a nation, that is a group of folks without spirit. They may say that they're Christians, but if they do not follow what's in this book of love, hallelujah, the first commandment is to love. You cannot say that you're a Christian and you love and pick up a weapon and tear little children's bodies apart. That's not love. That's not God. That's a mission from Satan from the pit of hell. Don't be confused. Do not be, hallelujah, afraid. Do not, hallelujah, be um, bamboozled or confused about who you are. That's why I'm saying it's important. I had a whole six or seven pages here, but I'm going to let the Holy Spirit talk to, through me to you to tell you what you need to know. You may not need to know everything that I have here, but Lord knows that, hallelujah, have your way, Holy Spirit. Let me just say that, hallelujah. Let me just say this. There are so many instances, hallelujah, that you can think of, of yourself where you, it could have been you, it should have been you, it would have been you had it not been, right, for the mercies and the grace of Jesus Christ. If it had not been for those who prayed for you, who prayed for me and brought me to this state that I am in today, that brought you and kept you where you are today. If it had not been for the word of God, the first lesson that I had for you is to hear. You have to hear the spirit. He said, my, the, my, my sheep, my people will know my voice. If you're not sure that you're hearing the spirit, then you test that by the word of God. If you think that you're hearing God in your ear and saying, go left, go right, go to school, go whatever it is that you think that you're hearing, you test it by the word. Hallelujah. You can go to a different ones to listen to their opinion, but the ultimate answer for you and the truth is the word of God. The truth is in the word of God. If it's not based in the word, if it's not foundational in the word, it ain't from God. So the first lesson that we're going to learn today is to hear the word of God. When folks are preaching and teaching and Bible study is going on, you listen to me, but you go home and check me and make sure I'm getting it right. You read it for yourself. So that's why I repeated the scripture. You go home and then you meditate on that word. You ruminate on that word to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. We all have issues. There's so much going on in the world today. So not only in the church, not only in our homes, not only in our own personal lives, but in the nation. And we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We should have an answer. We should have a strategy. We should have a plan. There is hope in God. There is power in the Holy Spirit. The second uh, point that I want to make, after you hear the word, obey the word. Jesus said for the disciples to wait. And the disciples did just that. Jesus had built up capital with his followers. How did he build up capital? Why did they trust him? Why did they wait and obey him? They didn't know anything about any Holy Spirit. They had not received the Spirit before. They didn't know what to expect. But Jesus told them, they heard, just go and wait. And why did he have capital with them? Because they saw Jesus open blinded eyes. They saw Jesus put spit on dirt and rub it on their eyes and eyes were open. They saw Jesus heal lepers. They saw Jesus heal the woman with the blood issue after 12 years. They saw Jesus tell that woman to stand up and be thou loose who was bent over for 18 years. They saw Jesus perform all of these things and they trusted and believed him. That is the basis of our faith. That's where our faith comes from. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. Our faith is built in this book. 
So you got to live in it, especially in the times that we're dealing with right now. So when the people saw what Jesus had did, all the miracles that he had performed, they said, I'm going to listen to Jesus and I'm going to stay in um, in Jerusalem and wait, just like he told me to. The people were all in one place on one accord. That's important to be in one place. Okay, we're on Zoom. The spirit is here. But Lord God, that we know that the Holy Spirit is here. I know the spirit is here because the spirit lives in me. And where I go, the spirit goes. So I know the spirit is here. I know that the spirit is living within you as well. And if you don't have Holy Spirit, you ask today. Today is the day of salvation. The second point is to, um, after you hear the word, they, need, they obey the word. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump ahead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because the third point is that, uh, my third point is that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power to do what? Hallelujah. All this madness going around us in our communities. and all. So when you say, uh, preacher, power to do what? What, do I, what is the Holy Ghost going to do for me? Well, I'm going to tell you, hallelujah, right now. The Holy, you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. According to scripture, power to be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. My sisters and my brothers, the power is knowing and understanding truth, but also to have the courage and the boldness to tell the truth in the midst of those who can take your property from you, they can take your liberty from you, they can take your life from you, but you still got to stand on the truth. You cannot shirk back, you cannot turn back, you cannot, hallelujah, run away, put your head in the sand as though you do not know what's going on. We are, hallelujah, the blood wash call of God. God is all-knowing. He's omnipotent, all-powerful. That spirit is living within you, and you tell me, I don't know what's going on. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. God, hallelujah, is, works through us. He works through the church. He can do all things, but God's not just coming down and going to walk around. You, he's a spirit. God is spirit. That spirit is living within us. We, the people uh, are depending upon those with some knowledge, wisdom, understanding. That's what the spirit is for. That is what the spirit is for. So you got to speak these things out of your mouth. You may not even understand it at the time, but if the word says it, you speak it. Why? Because that's the truth. If you speak anything else, what the devil is saying, you're just talking about and, and enforcing a lie. It's a lie that I don't know. I say, I know all things. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is within me. And in time and what I need to know, he'll show me which way to go. He'll show me the path that I should take. I love the 23rd Psalm and the whole Psalm. But the point is for this lesson is that he will lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not necessarily for you or for I. It's that God will get the glory. God has the ultimate plan. God knows the purpose that he left us here. A million people, they said, died from COVID. They're not here. You are, and so am I, for a purpose, for a purpose, to live a productive life, you know, to live a productive life. Hallelujah. And Lord, I'm so grateful, hallelujah, to still be here. Let me just tell you what Peter did before and after Holy Spirit. Before Peter received Holy Spirit, he denied Jesus three times. Even after he witnessed all the miracles, he heard the truth that set him free. And after Peter received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, he preached a sermon that placed the law and rejection of the prophets and the coming of the Messiah, whom the Pharisees and the scribes and the Jews, they rejected. But the Holy Spirit brought it into perfect context for him. He understood that Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. He is the Messiah. He is the promise of God. 
He had to come. He had to die. He had to be resurrected that we would be saved, that we would be forgiven, that that blood, hallelujah, no longer, hallelujah, the priest had to go behind the curtain and have blood every year for Passover. No, no, no. Jesus shed his blood once and for all times. If you sin, you have a right to go to Christ, hallelujah, and say, Lord, forgive me. That blood has already been shed for me. Don't let the enemy hold you captive, hallelujah, in your mistake. The devil is a liar. That's another lie from the pit of hell. Don't let him put that guilt on you. Don't let him put that shame on you. I am free. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says I'm free. Because Jesus said I'm free. Because Jesus went to the cross for me. I am free. That's the word that comes out of your mouth. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the truth of the matter is that what um, Peter said, it cut to the heart. And it dispelled the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and the scribes and forced them to face the reality that Jesus came, hallelujah, and that he was in fact the Messiah. By Jesus' death and resurrection, forgiveness and salvation is available to us. Holy Spirit has come to live with us and in us to help us live in this cruel and fallen and corrupt world. Hallelujah. And Jesus, even as Sister Denise said, he's coming back. That's the promise. He's coming back again. He's coming back for a church, he said, without spot or wrinkle. We have a responsibility, people of God, hallelujah, to stand strong, hallelujah, to stand and put our shoulders back. We don't need to be walking around with our heads down. We need to be walking. Why? Because we, again, are the blood washed of Jesus Christ. We represent Christ. We are his hands. We are his mouthpiece. We are his feet. He said, feed the hungry. Visit the sick that are incarcerated and hospitalized. He said, visit those who are in prison. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We have no time out for not one person in the body of Christ to say, well, I'm going to sit this one out. You can't. There's too much at stake. We have children, we have spouses, we have parents, we have siblings, we have co-workers, we have these children we don't know. We pray for all of those in Uvalde. We pray for those, our sisters and brothers in Buffalo. We pray across the nation and the world. That's what we're supposed to be doing at such a time as this. After hearing Peter preach, the people asked, what must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. Peter said, repent and be baptized, and you shall be saved. And with that one sermon, 3,000, hallelujah, were added to the church. Lord God, I would love to see that today, that our preaching, that the word would go forth so powerful under the anointing of Holy Spirit, that 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 would say, what must I do to be saved? People are lost and dying. They don't know what to do. They really don't. They following what you see on TV. You know, our Lord, help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Our men, Lord, have mercy. Lord God, so many of my sisters, so many of my sisters are going without husbands and, and, and going without because so many of our men have taken another route. So many of our men don't want to be men. So many, hallelujah, Lord, help me, Jesus. So many, Lord God, have bought into the lie and the deception that's going forth, hallelujah, in mass media, social media. That's what's being projected. There are they, the, the standard bearers, right, of, of fashion or industry or how you're supposed to look and what you can do and who you, who you can be. But God tells us who we are. God tells us how we're supposed to act. He tells us that. Hallelujah. He said you're supposed to love. He said you're supposed to be kind-hearted. He says that you're supposed to have peace. That's what the Holy Spirit ushers in. The Holy Spirit, the, the fruit of the Spirit, we know we have love and joy and peace. And yet we, we pray for peace. We're without peace. But the Lord said, and Jesus said, I give you my peace. I leave you my peace. The Spirit said, it's a, it's a, it's a fruit. Take it. Eat it. Enjoy it. You need it. That's why he gave it to us. Peace, love, patience, tenderness, kindness, faith. Ha hallelujah. Lord, that's what he gave us. Then you have the, the gifts of, of the spirit. Holy Spirit is 
the, the question is, why do you need the Holy Spirit? These are some of the reasons you can't live a life without Holy Spirit. Pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. And God will give it to us as need be to fulfill his purpose. Gifts of prophecy, right? Hallelujah. Gifts, hallelujah, of tongues, interpretation of tongues. I would love to see this come into the church and be manifested, unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Gifts, hallelujah, of words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the gifts. I'm asking your Father, for the gifts, for this congregation, for everyone that hears my voice. Lord, even in my life, let it be manifested. We want to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, come alive, that we might, Lord God, have light, Lord Jesus, in a world of darkness, that we might have salt, Lord God, which is a preservative and an additive that gives taste and flavor. That's who we are. That's who I'm claiming that we are. I'm not saying anything that the word didn't say. The word said that's who we are. And that's what I'm saying to you. Gift of tongues and interpretation. Oh, Lord, I, Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you. Gift of miracles and healing. Lord God, we need that in a time such as this. And we just thank you, Lord God, for the celebration today of the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came to give power to the church. So people of God, we have that power and responsibility to speak truth to power. We must be emboldened to stand up for righteousness and justice and justice and justice and truth. Wherever you live, whether you're in the north, I don't care, you're in the south, the east or the west, Holy Ghost is the same. Mutable God, he changes not. I don't care where you are. Hallelujah. It's the same spirit. Hallelujah, that's working in the north, that's working in the south. But we as the body of Christ, hallelujah, must come up and take our rightful place in this world. Um, uh, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, I don't care if you're black, white, Jew, Gentile, liberal, Republican, Democrat, I don't care what your affiliation is. That's all of this world. But what I'm talking about is supernatural power. I'm talking about of another, the other world. That's what I'm talking about. God is spirit. We are spirit. And when our body and our flesh, they say, goes back to the dirt from which we came, we are going back. Our spirit hallelujah, leaves the body and goes back to our father, just as Jesus did. So this is not the end. This is just a passing through. Don't think this is the end for you. It's not the end for me. We still have to give an account for what we did in this body. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. So Holy Spirit, as I've already said, is the third person in the Trinity and um, that the church began on this day in, in Antioch. So we thank God for sending Holy Spirit. But what I want to leave with you is that the hear the word, obey the word, and hold on to your faith. Right now, you need to hold on to your faith because you could be discouraged, you could be overwhelmed, you could be depressed, things don't go right, jobs may not be there, money may not be there, they're talking about some kind of financial hurricane, but my God, hallelujah, controls the winds, hallelujah, he controls the waves on the sea, he walks on water, he says, peace be still, he controls what's going to happen to us, and we just have to hold on to our faith that he knows the path that he's taking us in, don't be, hallelujah, upset or disturbed or discouraged based on what we hear on the news, Turn it off at some point. You know, you, got, you can't listen to that all day long because that is going into your ear and what's going into your ear is going into your mind, is going into your spirit. So the next thing when somebody asks you, how you doing? You can say, I don't know. I'm just so confused. I'm, I'm, I'm so troubled. I'm so, no, the devil is a liar. You speak the truth that's in the word. Not saying that we're, we don't get um, tired. I'm not saying that at all. Not, I'm not saying that we're not human. We are human. But the Holy Spirit has come to help us in our infirmities. The Holy Spirit has come to give us the hope and the peace and the joy. Depend upon that word. Stand on that word. Trust God. Even when it doesn't look like God's winning. Hallelujah. Hold on to your faith. When friends and family turn that may turn their back on you because you are a holy roller. You got the Holy Ghost. You can't go out partying and drinking. You can't go out um, what they got now is legal, right? Cannabis. You can go smoke cannabis, right? The devil is a liar. What do you need cannabis for? Reefer. Weed. You know what it is. Come on. 
Don't be fooled. This is the lie that I'm telling you that they will tell you and stand up there. They pay billions of dollars for advertising to condition our mind. That's being conditioned by the lie. Don't go for it. You know too much. Been through too much. God brought you too much. Through too much. Hallelujah. To listen to the lie of the devil. Thank you, Jesus. So when our children and those who look like us turn their guns on each other in our community, what do you have that you can really go and say to these children? We're, some of us are scared. We don't want to go out and talk to the kids. But some of us have kids and grandkids at home. Train them up the way that they need to be brought up. Teach them what they need to know. Teach them who they are. Then they won't be fooled and tricked and bamboozled into what the media tells them who they are. You tell them who they are. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I love you. When your money gets short and the bills are long and overdue, hold on to your faith. Hallelujah. When you receive a diagnosis that you didn't expect and don't want to hear, hold on to your faith. When people are massacred and racism and white supremacy and hatred are on full display and people choose to protect the right to bear a weapon of warfare for people who leave their neighborhood travel hours to our neighborhood to kill people who don't look like them, but look like you and me or any of God's creation. I don't care if they white, black, pink, or blue. Hallelujah, they have no right to take a life. That person, as I said before, is on a devil's mission. Hallelujah, and our hallelujah adversary, as we know, has, has a job. He's always on post. Kill, steal, and destroy. That's the mission. That's the plan. He doesn't change. That is the mission of the enemy. What's our mission, saints of God? What's our mission? Hallelujah. We need to be on post because greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. He can't whip us. There are too many of us, and God is in control. I don't care if it was one, like Elijah said. He said, oh, Lord, Elijah, remember the Old Testament? He was running when they were coming to uh, kill him. Then he was running, trying to hide in the cave. He said, oh, Lord, I'm the only one left. He said, not so, young man. He said, we have, I have hundreds of other prophets. They're hiding in caves, too. They're out there, too. You are never alone. Saints of God, you are never alone. So don't let the enemy trap you off and think it's just you. You're the only one going through this. The devil is a liar. You got to know the word so you can speak back to the enemy. When he puts fear in you, you said the fear is not of God. It's of the devil. The Lord has come to give me peace and joy, hallelujah, and protection. That's what you, you got to know to talk back. Don't just lay in the bed and think about all this nonsense. Oh, you can't sleep. You're tossing and turning. You think this is the end for you. God is in control. So my final word to you today is hold on to your faith. Remember what God has brought you through. Remember how you thought your back was against the wall. All of us have a testimony. We don't do testimony service anymore, but we all got a testimony and you need to tell your testimony. We're ashamed to tell our testimony. We got suits and pretty dresses, long dresses, heads covered. Now we don't want to tell people you were out on the corner at one point. You, you maybe weren't on the corner, but you were in the back room somewhere at some point giving up something for something else you wanted. It wasn't godly. Using drugs, lying, cheating, stealing. The de don't let the devil hold that uh, against us. We've been freed, delivered, and, and um, forgiven. We're forgiven in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we just want to thank you for your presence. We just pray, Heavenly Father, hallelujah, that anyone, anyone, that's under the sound of my voice, that has not said yes, hallelujah to you, Jesus. There is no other way. There is no other way, hallelujah. There is no other way to live. This is peace and joy and blessings. I don't care what it looks like on the other side that they're having a good time. They all start out, you see the big billboards and posters. They all having a wonderful time smoking cigarettes and they're young and pearly white teeth, hair, everything, bodies tight. Child, please. When they get to the end, after that sin, after that sin works its way through them, they're on a respirator. They can't breathe. They have cancer. The hallelujah. They have not taken care of their bodies. Lord God, when they get to the end, 
The boyfriend is gone, the money is gone, the job is gone, and then you don't see them on TV no more. They're not on the billboard. It's a lie from the pit of hell. So you got to know the truth. So when you look at things, you're not, you know, you're not overtaken with it because you're wise. We ask for the spirit. It's a gift. Give the wisdom. Ask God, give me the gift of wisdom. Give you the gift of wisdom. And listen to sound um, advice, biblical advice. Advice of your elders. We didn't get to this age by not going through anything. Anybody here over 50? Anybody? You've been through something. You need to tell these young girls something. Tell these young men something. That you know. You know what the end of that, that experience is going to be. Oh, Lord, I love you. Bring us on in, baby, Coleman. But I'll be going on and on. I love the Lord. I love the word. I love you in the name of Jesus. Give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. There is no other way. Hashama. Hey, glory. will be the best decision that you ever made. Hallelujah. Give your life to Christ today. He's waiting for you. He wants you. He's pleading with you. He died for you. Hallelujah. There is no way. other way. There is no way I can go Tears 
There's no other way. There's no other way. One more time, one more time, everybody. for Christ today? Anyone that wants to say yes? Anyone that wants to be um, prayed for? Anyone even in the um, Facebook? Anyone that's in Facebook, there is a number that they can call the church. I'm going to let you know. You can send, you can send a email to Carter Community at 8 at gmail.com and remember Reverend Greta said hold on to your faith just put in the chat hold on to your faith and one of the officers will get in contact with you and our pastor the Reverend Dr. Kevin Miller will get in contact with you hold on to your faith and remember know the truth know the truth don't be ashamed of what others might say, get in that word like Reverend Greta said and know the truth and hold on to your faith. Because God wants you and he, I know you felt that tugging in your heart. And if you feel that tugging in your heart, that's God telling you to come home, come home and have rest, have peace, have peace so that you may have everlasting life with the father, with the son, amen. Amen. And before we go on, wasn't that an awesome service? Awesome service. Thank you, sister. Thank you. And before we go, because I know God touched her and touched that sermon. It wasn't just her words. It was God speaking through his anointed vessel. So I'm going to pray for my sister, Reverend Anderson. God, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your daughter. Thank you for your servant who is not ashamed of the gospel. Thank you for the words that you put into her mouth and the words that you had her put on those papers to show you, give us your words. Thank you. 
We know that she studied and showed herself approved. And Lord, we saw that she poured out everything, everything to us. So God, give her back a double portion. Give her back a double portion so that she may stand again and preach the gospel. Lord, let no harm or danger come to her or her husband, Harold, or her sister, Gwen, or anyone that is connected to her. Let them have let them have peace all the days of their lives. Let them have prosperity all the days of their lives. Lord, continue to bless them. Continue to walk with them. Continue to hold their hands. And continue to continuously hold our sister's hand. Thank you, God, for Reverend Greta Anderson. Amen. Brother Coleman, are you gonna, Reverend Coleman, are you gonna send us on home right now? You did that okay. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Amen.